I was reading last night uh, all through Proverbs. Apparently for another time because we're going to Luke. <laughs> Luke chapter 17, I believe it is. begin with verse uh, 7, just to remind us all, Jesus speaking, of course, he says, but which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to meet? And will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me, till I have eaten and drank, uh, drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doeth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not, or I thought not. Or no. A, in today's world, we will find from time to time uh, overseers or uh, that are in a boss position who do have servants that will actually say thank you to their servants after they have done what they have been told to do. Very seldom does that take place. But it does happen from time to time. But for the most part, no. If I had a servant, you had a servant uh, who was out feeding their cattle is what the Lord is saying. When he got done with all of that and came back to the house, would you say to him, go in there and uh, sit down and eat? No, we wouldn't. Instead, we would say, go in there now and make us uh, our dinner and get our drinks ready. And when I'm done eating and drinking, then you can go in there and sit down and eat. That's the way it works with the servant. And for the most part, uh, we, don't, we don't say thank you. Now, <clears throat> 10, so likewise ye, or you, when you shall have done all these things which are commanded you, this is when we should say this right here. We are unprofitable servants, we have done that which was our duty to do. Now, do you understand what Jesus is saying there and what he's talking about there? In case you don't, and just don't want to say, no, I don't understand it, I'm going to help you. Jesus is talking about uh, right here to the Christian people. He's saying when we have done what, the, what our Lord has commanded us to do, we are to say we are unprofitable servants because we have only done that which we were told to do. It was our duty from the Lord to do this and do that, and we do it. And a lot of times we want a pat on the back to do, uh, because we've done it. We want some uh, notification because we've done it. Uh, but Jesus says, hey, you haven't went out of your way and did something on your own. You've done what I have told you to do. Now, and it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria, Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village... There met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, 
he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Now notice this, one out of ten people that had leprosy. They asked God to have mercy upon them, and God did. But one only gave God thanks and worshipped him, and glorified the Lord. He came back to the Lord, bowed down at his feet, and worshipped him, and thanked him. And Jesus stressed that this was a Samaritan. He stresses that for a purpose. Because back then, the Samaritans, they were not liked too much. They were looked upon like they were just animals, dogs, if you will. The Jews didn't care for him in any way, shape, or form. <clears throat> uh, the Jews thought of themselves much higher than the Samaritans. And there's another place in the Bible where a priest walks by a man that is in need and continues to go on. A Levi, a priest and a Levi, supposedly called of God, uh, supposedly about God's work, because we read about the priest and the Levi uh, doing the work of God. And they both just walked right on by like they didn't even see this feller. One of them crossed on the other side of the street so he wouldn't even have to walk by the Samaritan. Uh, or, 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 or not the Samaritan, but the man in need. And at that time, a Samaritan also came by and stopped and helped the man. He was a good Samaritan. Now, there's a lot of uh, talk about a good Samaritan in the Bible, but the goodest, the best Samaritan of them all will be Jesus Christ himself. Now, and Jesus answering said, <clears throat> verse 17, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Where are the other nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger, or except this man. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Now, out of those ten, now all ten... <clears throat> Uh, in verse 14, we're reminded, and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. So they all got cleansed of the leprosy, but only one out of those ten, church, was made whole. There's a big difference between that. Sometimes, when people have a disease... Whether they serve God or not in this life, they get healed of those diseases. But if they are healed, it's not the work of Satan, because Satan, there's no good in Satan whatsoever. Satan wants the disease there. He wants to uh, hinder people. He wants to uh, shake their faith. He wants to uh, get them uh, to uh, contemplate and think of about the disease and what could, what may, and a lot of times what will indeed uh, become of this disease. And uh, though it may take time or it may not, eventually how this disease will be the taking, uh, will take their lives. The Satan's all about that. Striking fear into people, striking doubt into people, making them think, well, what have I done? This is upon me. What have I done? Lord, we start questioning God. Then, uh, you know, sometimes the uh, Christians, they are healed of those diseases. Sometimes the Christians are not healed. Sometimes a sinner is healed of those diseases. Sometimes they are not. But only the Christians have been made whole. 
regardless of what uh, takes place in a Christian's life, regardless of what kind of disease or sickness, if any, uh, comes into our lives, comes upon our body, and is actually allowed to take us out of this world, we have no uh, need to worry about anything. Because we have indeed been made whole. And the Lord God reminds me that if the Son of Man shall set us free, we have been uh, made free indeed. And if we are free, we are uh, made whole. Now, many people today, as you and I both are aware of, <clears throat> have been uh, set free, have been uh, cleansed, have gotten our wish, have gotten our heart's desire, have gotten our prayers, uh, so it would seem that uh, they have been answered, <clears throat> only to have taken advantage of God. <clears throat> Many people are continuing to take advantage of God. I, I will notice today when I pulled over on the way to church to get a little bit of gas, uh, I passed, I think, one, two, uh, three places of worship. <clears throat> and I seen, I think, uh, three cars at one place, four cars at the other place, and, and that's pretty much it. Maybe five at one. Why, and my first thought was, how, uh, th that's when this came to me, how people take advantage of God in their time of need, or they think they are. Because rest assured, God tells us in his word, uh, be not deceived, God is not mocked. What a man reaps, that he shall indeed sow. Uh, I mean, what he sows, he shall indeed reap. Thank you, Lord, for uh, turning that around on me so Brother Kyle didn't have to straighten me out there. <laughs> All right. But in today's world, just like way back then, I don't know about the rest of you, but I can see, church, where people, uh, I don't know if they inquire of you, but I have had to be in the hundreds of, maybe thousands of times since I have come to know the Lord, where people have asked me to remember them in prayer, or remember them when I pray, or pray for them whenever I go to pray, and some of them ask for specific things, and then uh, if I have the nerve to ask, do you go to church, are you a church goer, are you a Christian? Uh, a lot of times I hear no. And I just leave it at that. Sometimes I go and uh, I uh, try to explain to them, <clears throat> we cannot just use the Lord when we want to and hope to get what we want in life and then forget about Him because I have seen that again and again. And I continue to see that. As for something of God, we actually get this, what we have asked of God to give, and then we forget all about who God is. We don't even take the time to come back and give God thanks for the majority of the part of time. Uh, nine out of ten people today still continue to just go their way and not even uh, having, let me, having within themselves the, uh, uh, the willingness, I should I, I'll use the willingness or the gratitude to turn back unto the Lord and say, Thank you, Heavenly Father, for answering my prayer, because I know this come from you. I know this was of you, but for nine out of ten times, uh, God is still hearing the same thing. He might get one, he may get a couple that will stop what they're doing when they realize 
God has answered their prayer and they will turn their hearts and their faces back unto God and begin to thank Him as it should be, begin to glorify Him as it should be, begin to worship Him as it should be. But, uh, 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 but for the most part, people are just too busy for some odd reason in their life today. Their schedule is matched. Church, listen, I haven't done this since I've been pastoring here, uh, but for the last uh, maybe a month and a half or two months, I have went and, uh, went aside and uh, landed me a part-time job. It's only about five days a week, five, maybe six days a week sometime, but you know what? I still, even though I am doing that, I'm still pastoring a, a little a little church, a community church. I'm still calling the people up. I'm and seeing how they are. I'm still going to uh, uh, visit the people and try to uplift their spirits. I can't do everything at once. I'm only one person. I can't be everywhere at once. And I'm not saying uh, anything that I'm saying uh, to be brave upon or to get notification of it but on my way to work bright and early in the morning when it's still in the dark hours I'm thanking God that I have the opportunity and I'm praying praising God and I'm praying without ceasing all through the day uh, just like the Bible tells me to do and I tell you church a lot of times I, I fill up with tears on God's behalf uh, uh, not because because uh, I feel uh, bad for God, but I have compassion uh, for my Heavenly Father that has compassion for me. And church, when I consider the ways of the world, when I consider the ways of Christian people today that say they are Christian, but how that they are doing everything in the world except giving thanks unto the Lord. When they are doing everything, they may we make sure that we get up in the morning and go to our jobs, do we not? I don't know. I know some uh, start around 8 in the morning. I know some start around 9. I know others may start around 6 or something like that. But church, I start when it's still dark outside and I'm still in the house of God regardless of the hours I work. I told them before I started, uh, Sundays is uh, out of the question it's, it's a done deal. If we're going to talk Sundays, I'm going to go somewhere else and not waste your time. It's just the way it had to be. Uh, because church, I remember God's word tells me if I will keep him first and put him above everything, he will be the very one uh, to fight my battles. He will be the very one uh, that will bless me and what I put forth my hands to do. But church, there's too much of the, the, of the other way uh, going on today, are they not? How can we uh, call ourselves uh, Christians, which is Christ like? I'm talking about the people that are doing it. How can we have the nerve uh, to say that we're in God's will? And if we are calling ourselves a Christian, and if uh, uh, that means Christ like and it does, uh, then to say I am a Christian is to say I do my best to walk according to the ways of God. I do my best to worship and serve God in spirit and in truth. I do my best to show God that I love Him by doing what He tells me to do in His Word which is if you love me Jesus said keep my commandments. But church is not going on today to the best of my knowledge and from what I can see uh, three, four, and five uh, uh, cars in God's house uh, this morning on my way here. Now, I'm not going to sit here and try to get into how many people are coming and how
how many people are not. I want to reach for so much farther outside of the walls that we are in and talk to anybody that actually listen. We cannot say uh, that we are Christians and do everything uh, uh, except what God says and then think everything is okay. Uh, but many times uh, we forget what the Bible says. Brother God said because of their own ways, because of their own beliefs, uh, because of their own rules that they have come up with. Uh, Brother God says plain as a nose on my face uh, because of that uh, I will allow them uh, to believe a lie uh, but he don't stop there. He says I will allow them uh, to believe that lie and they will indeed be damned. Uh, church I don't know about you but I, I, I spend a lot of time uh, thinking about people uh, that don't know God who say they do. I think a whole lot and I take them to God every time they come to my mind. How is it? It's beyond my recognition. It's beyond my comprehension. It's beyond my understanding how we can pro portray and proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and our God and our King, our brother, and then do everything except what he said. I don't know how people do it other than we get into a formality. I've seen it again and again. Uh, we begin to make our own rules. Well, God uh, winks, he said. He'll wink at my ignorance in his word. Yes, he did. But that don't give me or nobody else the excuse uh, to begin to make our own rules as we go along. Uh, church, I'm going to have to worship a uh, God in one way, and that is in spirit and in truth. Why is that the only way? Because that's what the word of God says. Those who worship God I must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And church, God seeks those uh, that will do exactly that. Oh, but as the world continues to go, I see the word of God uh, uh, coming to pass, and, and, and we're living in uh, uh, we're living in those times uh, right before our own eyes, right in front of our faces. And, and, and for the life of me, I don't understand uh, why people can actually believe believe and buy in and, and begin to think that they can write at their own program in a manner to serve God. How can I be serving God if I will work every day of the week and not take time to take uh, uh, do what God said? There's no way, church, I can understand and sympathize. Uh, sometimes emergencies take place. Uh, brother and I, and I can understand that. Why, if my car was broke down. It just happened on a Sunday. I'm going to be the very one uh, to go out there and do what I can do uh, to get it fixed on the Sunday because I know I'm going to need it uh, the very next day and throughout the week. I'm not going to sit there and say the Lord God tells me I can't do anything. I can't get this fixed. But, uh, but uh, if something like that happens, if my brother is in need on a Sunday, something happens, I'll do what I can uh, to help them out. If they need help for this or that, uh, and it falls on a Sunday, I'm the type of guy that'll put things aside and do what I can uh, to help them out. Uh, just like the Lord asked, which of you uh, having an ox upon the Sabbath day, if it fell into a ditch, which, which of you would not go out there and try your best to pull him out or uh, uh, each and every one of us would. Oh, but church it goes so much farther than that today does it not in today's world. And brother I'm here to tell you, I know the word of God steps on toes, but I'll tell you what it's alright with me when it does. It steps on my toes a lot too, and it's okay with me because brother, it's constructive criticism uh, that comes from the word of God. And if uh, the word of God 
uh, criticizes my own ways. Uh, something needs to change. And it's my ways because the one thing that will never change is the word of God. It's going to remain the same. If God said it was evil then, it's evil today. If God said it was wrong then, it's wrong today. If God called something an abomination uh, way back then, it's still an abomination today. Uh, but I'll tell you something, church, for the most part, uh, we're not looking at uh, the Word of God the way we used to. I remember back in the day uh, when I was growing up in the hills of old Kentucky, uh, brother, how the people would swarm uh, the house of God, uh, and they would have their work clothes on, uh, their mining caps with their little light on, the old battery light strapped around them, uh, come in uh, as dirty as dirty could be, but they stand around the walls of God's house uh, to hear the word of God because they wanted it. They did. They had to work, but to praise God, even though they had to work. And church, I'm talking about 18 inches high of where they had to crawl and scoop, and they still uh, walked into the house of God uh, to give him glory, honor, and praise, and worship him, and to be strengthened for the upcoming week. Uh, brother, we don't see it today, do we? We see people uh, writing their own laws. I see people writing uh, their own Bible, so to speak. But I'll tell you one thing. We can put a, uh, a MB's version on it, which is Miller Bolton's version. And brother, it won't do a thing except send you to hell. It takes the Word of God uh, to get us into heaven uh, because the Word of God is Jesus Christ wrapped in the flesh. Uh, God wrapped Jesus, His only begotten Son. He wrapped Him in the flesh, did He not? And He sent Him down unto earth to dwell among you and I. And the only thing we can do today is we're living exactly the way uh, God's Word said we were going to be. Uh, brother, even after knowing in the last days how mankind uh, was going to be, uh, God still has us here. He still has prophets. And brother, I'm one of them. Praise God. Uh, that will stand upon His Word and teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, not the way Mark sees something uh, compared to the way Matthew seen it. Uh, brother, if Matthew, Mark, and John, I can, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I can read all four uh, ch uh, uh, books of that. And I have again and again. And I can see they all sing. Uh, maybe something that were the same. Uh, but I also can see uh, Brother uh, John speaks of some things more clearly than the others do. And he'll add something that took place that the others did not mention. And most people will uh, say, look at this. Uh, the Bible contradicts itself right here. Not, uh, not in any way, shape, or form. Everybody may or may not have seen the same thing. Uh, but brother, I'll guarantee you one thing. That's four witnesses right there uh, that conclude the word of God and agree with everything that happened. It's just at that specific time of uh, the one person seen maybe a little bit more or maybe he was the only one uh, led by the Holy Spirit uh, to write it down in God's word. So the other three, uh, we wouldn't miss what the other three uh, didn't write. Uh, but anyway, it goes church in today's world. Uh, it, uh, everything we do for the most part. And you know we all have to raise our hand at one time or another uh, because we're guilty of it at one time or another. Uh, we do what we want to do uh, and rather than doing what God uh, tells us to do. And then we want recognition, do we not? We want to get patted on the back, do we not? While Brother Miller and I have been going uh, to church all of my life. Uh, 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 have you ever heard that? 
And some of the people that say that, uh, my first thought is, in, in all of your life, which has been a good long time, and it still apparently ain't done you a bit of good, because you ain't changed uh, from the day I met you. You've been the same then. You're the same now. No, I don't go out and say it, church. It just leads to an argument and ill feelings. But brother, the word of God uh, shows me and tells me uh, who's telling the truth and who is just uh, saying it. Uh, brother, they worship me, Jesus said, uh, with their lips, uh, but their hearts are far from me. I thank God to know church. And no matter who I impress or who I don't impress, uh, brother, God knows my heart. God knows what's in my mind. God knows what uh, my intentions are. God knows what uh, what I desire in my heart. And he knows what I'm trying to do. I don't want to just preach uh, to people that come inside this little church. I want to preach outside of the walls and to my bed uh, to reach, like I said earlier, anybody and everybody who will give me a, 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 the time of day and tell them the glorious news of Jesus Christ. And brother, uh, uh, which is he came down uh, from the splendors and portals of heaven and came down and dwelt in this old uh, heathen evil and adultful world and he died upon the cross for me, for my sins and for you, you and your sins and they buried him no man took his life he willingly laid it down and since he laid it down he had the power uh, to do so on the third day just like he said he took it up again praise God and he ascended back up into heaven from where he came from and brother he's still there he sits on the right hand of God making intercession for you and I and the, and the good news is this uh, the kingdom of God is come unto you uh, the kingdom of God is near each and every one the kingdom of God is not over here on Watham it's not over there on Nine Mile of Fellowship it's not down the road at the other little churches it's within you uh, the Bible tells me uh, the kingdom of God is within you and if the kingdom of God has been uh, within me and given unto me uh, by the Holy Spirit of God how is it that I can make myself believe uh, like so many people are doing today I can go where I want when I want uh, talk any way I want if uh, uh, however I want uh, uh, visit every place on earth if that's what I want to do how can I make myself uh, when God says come ye out from among the world touch not taste not have no part of if not knowing God said that and he does how is it that people uh, today and they do uh, continue to write their own laws uh, God uh, forgive me of it he's a merciful God yes indeed he is but when it comes push come to shove are uh, you beginning to mock God and tempt God uh, brother God's not in it uh, nowhere to be found if I'm going to uh, when I repent. You know what repent means? It means to turn away from. Uh, brother, not to do a 100, I mean a 360 degree. If I do, if I'm here sinning and I turn a 360 degree turn, am I not right back to where I started? Uh, brother, it means to turn from, uh, to turn away from and to let it all go and to leave it alone. Uh, to get off of whatever I'm doing. Uh, to let go of the thing uh, that's going against God when I turn from it and repent unto God and mean it in my heart then and only then a uh, brother God is going to listen other than that we're just a sinner and God hears not a sinner but when we are uh, uh, sincere with God then God and we begin to desire to do his will we don't know how a lot of times. Lord, I don't know how. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what to do. I don't know how. I don't know where to start. But I, my heart, look at it. 